So TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and Reels are pretty much gonna be the future of content. The current generation has been exposed to and is just consuming so much more information than has ever been available at any point in the past. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I'm not the first person to say this, but this could potentially be a really big problem. So let's take a look at all the different social media platforms, for example. We'll start with Twitter because I think it is probably the most polarizing and causes the most headaches. I love Twitter. I feel like Twitter is the modern day newspaper. By comparing the differing viewpoints, you'll be better able to form an intelligent opinion of your own. But it is also just a circus, like 24 seven. You could go from a hilarious little shit post to some kind of outraging political video in a matter of seconds. Honestly, every single time I leave Twitter, I feel like it's because my emotions got stirred to the point where I just couldn't stay on the platform anymore. It's never been because I ran out of content. It's because I typically don't feel great uh, by the time I leave Twitter. So moving on to Instagram, I think that it's a bit like Frankenstein's monster at this point. You have all these separate features that the app has just pulled and is trying to make work on its platform, but it's gone so far away from its original purpose, which was just posting photos and following your friends. I don't think I like this app very much. I still think that the nature of the platform is a lot of fakeness. It's a lot of Facetune, Photoshop, all these videos and pictures. They paint something that is much different than reality. And in the end, you always end up comparing your life and the stuff that you're doing to what you see on the platform. And when I leave Instagram typically after a session, um, it's not like Twitter where I'd say a majority of the time I don't feel good. With Instagram, it's more like half and half. And as I'm sure you've probably been able to tell, uh, Instagram is also trying to push more video content. Even on YouTube, uh, the platform that I grew up with and I fell in love with when I was a kid, um, it's starting to change. We have this super busy editing style, oversaturation, just super in your face content. This huge addition of YouTube Shorts is an insane pivot by the world's number two search engine, YouTube. And the nature and the dynamic of the platform is changing. So all these apps and platforms are slowly becoming the same thing, which is this machine that delivers cheap dopamine to a viewer that is trying to escape reality. But I will say, there is one app that stands head and shoulders above the rest when it comes to what the future of content is going to be. Now the TikTok algorithm is scary because there are times when I genuinely think it knows me better than I know myself. And there's no doubt that it knows me better than my best friends do, my family does. For a piece of technology to have that sort of inside knowledge about me is scary. You could easily say, oh, I'm just gonna be on here for a minute. You open up the app, you start scrolling, you see a viral animal video. Oh, oh this is my son. Ah, don't play with me right now. This is my channel. And then next, you see this niche Robert Pattinson joke just seemingly come out of nowhere. You can get your guy wrong. You know, it's a zicky. Get your hand on my dosa, dosa. You know, I be with gorillas. What we don't realize is that content is being perfectly curated for you and it's only getting better. Now, of course, different platforms offer different benefits and incentives. I think that on YouTube, it still is by far the best place to grow a community. And that's why I'm here. I want to connect with people who resonate with me and resonate with my thoughts and what I'm saying and what I'm interested in. And a lot of people, I think, are sort of triggered by this term, short form video which of course, by definition, I don't think that that's wrong. I think it's not just short form video that is becoming more popular now. I think it's cutting straight to the point of whatever it is that you're trying to say, whatever story, whatever kind of message you're going after, that is what people are going to resonate with. Now, it just so happens that the number one place to find these types of videos, uh, just because the algorithm is so good, happens to be TikTok. And a lot of people will say that it contributes to a decrease in our attention span. I agree with that. But the thing is, everybody's fighting for attention. And a lot of people can complain that it is decreasing our attention spans, but at the end of the day, it is where everything is going. You have to evolve and you have to embrace the platform to a certain extent. Now, this wasn't something that was easy for me to uh, realize or accept, mainly because I'm a big fan of film. I love film, I love long form content, but I think in order to really understand where everything is going, we have to look at the evolution of YouTube. 
So I think the best place to start with when it comes to YouTube is analyzing the modern day because it's what we're all familiar with. If I asked you, who's the biggest creator on YouTube today? I think a majority of us would probably respond with, I recreated every single set from Squid Game in real life. Mr. Beast. Now, when I think of Mr. Beast, he has a specific niche just absolutely nailed down. He dreams and thinks bigger than anyone else on the platform. He loves Steve Jobs, and I feel like models his life after him in a lot of ways. In fact, if you go back to his videos, you'll see a lot of Steve Jobs posters sort of all over his walls. He has his videos down to a science. He knows how to retain, he knows click-through rates, he eats, breathes, sleeps YouTube. Even from watching this video right now, I think you could tell that this is not Mr. Beast. But when you're young and you wanna be a creator and you're looking at the landscape and the platform, you tend to look at the biggest people and you tell yourself, I wanna be just like them. I'm here to tell you that that is a trap. If you wanna be the next Mr. Beast or whoever it is that you admire, it's gonna sound cliche, but you have to be you. No amount of retention or click-through rate optimization can replace being yourself. And I think sometimes as creators or uh, people in general, honestly, we have to understand that we're not going to appeal to everybody. We might only appeal to a very, very small subset of people, maybe the most niche categories possible. That's okay. I've been with this platform nearly since the beginning. I used to watch Fred when I was young and uh, I think it was hilarious that he had a high-pitched voice, so much so that I went out and got my own little flip camera, if you remember those, and you're a dinosaur like me, uh, where literally you just have a USB and it plugs right into the side of your computer. And the selling point for me was that I thought that everything that I shot would just upload directly to YouTube. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Now, the problem with that was I didn't know how to use editing software. So everything that I shot happened to be one take, like it was 1917 or something, because I didn't know how to make cuts. That is just how long I've been around and um, exposed to this platform, interested in video, uh, because all these different things inspired me to want to learn. The point is, I've seen the progression of YouTube. A lot of those videos just wouldn't perform today, not because they're bad videos, but just because of the nature of the platform and how it's been changing. Now, sometimes you need a little extra time to build that relationship with your audience and have the same impact on them. When I think of that concept, and then this sort of new revolution, this new dawn of short form video, I think about all the new ideas, the new possibilities that exist for fostering this type of relationship. What at one point might have been something that is sad, uh, something that has a type of gloomy outlook as far as the future of where content is going. I tend to get a lot of energy and I get really excited about it. And I'm not gonna lie, it's harder with short form video, but I do have some ideas on how we can tackle this future together. So when looking at short form content in the future, I think that there are some really good things that are gonna come from it, but there's also gonna be a few bad things. Let's start with talking about why this direction could potentially be a bad thing. It really does feed into our need to be entertained as quickly as possible, and it does nothing to help our attention spans. It's extremely hard, as we've talked about, to build relationships that are founded on only 10 to 15 seconds with each other. I think the other thing to keep in mind is that it's not just TikTok and short form content. We are being drawn in so many different directions by all the different streaming platforms, all the different kind of services out there. It's not just TikTok versus YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels. It's TikTok versus Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max, Disney Plus. All these different streaming services are out there fighting for your attention and it's only going to get more intense. Now those are sort of my main concerns, but I do think that this is also a very good direction for content to be going in. There is so much stuff out there now that the best, the highest quality tends to rise to the surface. In addition to watching film and watching all these shows, content consuming and production, I love to read and write. <laughs> it might seem a little ironic due to this video, but I think that there's nothing better and nothing that shows more mastery of your subject when you're able to make your point in the shortest amount of time possible. That's why I think TikTok and short form content are genius. I'm really happy that um, short form content is democratizing the ability to create videos. And I hope that people get better at it because the more familiar they are with how to edit, how to cut, how to shoot, script, act, then the stuff that's gonna come out of people in the future is going to be incredible. I'm here to tell you if you are a consumer or if you are a content producer, watch the stuff that you wanna watch, support the people that you wanna support. And so the one last thing that I'll say sort of on this point of where content is going, 
uh, whether it's short form, long form, a film, a TV series, there is a strict difference between entertainment and art. Entertainment on the one hand, you know pretty much exactly what it is that you're going to get. It's Drake, it's Kanye, it's mainstream stuff. There's nothing wrong with the big names, the Mr. Beasts, all these artists. In fact, I'm happy that they found exactly what their niche is, what their formula is, and they iterate on it. But you know that you're going to enjoy it at the end of the day, and that you're going to get some kind of emotional response. Art, on the other hand, is a little bit more challenging in the sense that you might be uncomfortable while you consume it. You might have your mind uh, kind of expanded, and you might be challenged a bit. So is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. But I do know, and I personally feel, like if we are able to strike the balance between entertainment and art, then no matter what type of content exists in the future, short form, long form, film, TV series, I know that we're gonna be in good hands.